very, very important. And therefore, we need to focus on these skill sets in the new normal, which is building creativity, entrepreneurship and initiative, leadership, and of course, advanced IT and basics of digital skills. So these, some, these are some of the areas that let's really try and reinforce by building on the skill sets, especially because you do have the time today. Uh, do you know this guy, Shivani? Since you're again on my screen, I'm going to ask you. So Shivani, you unmute yourself. Do you know who this is? Anybody? Jack Ma. Oh, fab. Who's that? Can you call out your name? Sydney, Sydney Roderick. Okay. Hi, Sydney. Yes. And uh, why is he uh, popular or famous? He owns Alibaba.com. Yeah. Also, in, uh, recently, he was in the news because they couldn't find him. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we found him definitely online. And I think that's where digital footprint is so, so important. Uh, listen in to see what he's got to say about skills. Education, it's a good, big challenge now. If we do not change the way we teach, 30 years later we'll be in trouble. Because the way we teach, the, the thing we talk, teach our kids are the things in the past 200 years, it's knowledge based. And we cannot teach our kids to compete with machine who is smarter. We have to teach something unique. That is, machine can never catch up with us. Value, believing, independent thinking, teamwork, care for others. These are the soft part. The knowledge may not teach you that. Folks, mm. that's why I think we should teach our kids on uh, sports, entertain uh, the, the music, painting, art, to so making sure humans should be different from everything we teach should be different from machine. If the machine can do better, you have to think about it. So as you saw, you know, uh, he's really highlighted on certain skills and also drew a lot of importance on the fact that if the machine can do better, uh, you know, a lot of us would really need to rethink about what we're going to do next. So um, this brings us to what are then the skills in the new normal. And these are four categories that have been highlighted by the World Economic Forum again problem solving, working with people, self-management, and technology and development. I'd like to now uh, introduce a poll. So um, are we ready, uh, Achal ma'am? Yeah. So um, what skill do you think will be most important in this new normal world? I'd like each one of you to quickly uh, put that across. Can we quickly have the rest of you as well put in your polls? Come on, let, let's. Some of you still feel working with people is lower. Come on, let's let's start thinking. Self management. What are some of the skills that are uh, really going to be important according to you? Problem solving, working with people, self management, technology and development. We've got about 56% of you. Hey, this is an, uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's not a poll that is going to reveal who you are, right? So you can, you just have to give your answer. So I think uh, let's put the answers quickly. Sure. I think should we wait for a couple? Okay, we're, we're good. Are we good with this? Okay, okay, okay. okay. That's fine. Yeah, no, we can stop it. No problem. Yeah. So this is what it looks like where we have 
21% of you saying that problem solving skills would be important. Working with people is at 11%. Self-management is 18%. And technology and development, and of course that seems to be like an obvious one, which is at 50%. All right. So now I'm going to take each of these, uh, you know, broad categories and uh, let's try and understand how we can enhance each of these skill sets. Uh, moving forward, Achal ma'am. Yeah. Shall I move ahead? The poll's closed, right? Yes, it's closed. Let's take it this, the first one, which is problem solving, where you 21% of you uh, felt that this was an important skill set to develop. Uh, when you're looking at problem solving, you're actually looking at uh, two parts to it. One, which is critical thinking and crisis management. And the other, of course, is analytical thinking and innovation. As you move up the hierarchy, okay, you will notice that uh, senior level of management have a lot of things to really, really uh, work on and uh, deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, right? What can you and I do in a situation like this? The, uh, the skill set to hone or to develop is that let's start working on developing lateral skill sets or thinking laterally. So uh, one of the ways to do that is uh, when you approach your manager with the problem, as well as a solution. You know, that becomes very important to also kind of enhance your ability to think critically and showcase that this skill set of you in yours is, uh, you know, is building up. And of course, it adds up to the initiative and responsibility that you are taking. And these are some things which are very important aspects, especially when you are wanting to grow in the hierarchy or grow in, in your, uh, in your uh, corporate uh, corporate uh, life okay the other aspect is analytical thinking and innovation so very important for us to break down complex problems okay and that is something that we uh, we need to kind of do from time to time and then give con conclusions this is something that is really really uh, valued as as a team member uh, sometimes these uh, results or these ends could be unconventional Okay, uh, so what's something that you heard, I'm sure in your management classes very often is think outside the box. But uh, I always like to add this, don't forget the box. Don't forget the boundaries within which. So, uh, you know, yes, as Indians, we are uh, very often using this terminology called jugar. And uh, definitely many a times we've noticed that Dugar really does enable us to get into, uh, get solutions which could be unconventional at that point. But don't forget aspects of integrity, uh, you know, values, ethics. Uh, this is the, the, the boundary of your uh, thinking process or the, you know, or the solution process which is very important uh, as an integrity point of view as an employee. And therefore I say that's the boundary of the, Thinking or thinking outside the box, but not forgetting the outlines of that particular um, box. Uh, we have a poll here as well, right? So uh, can we just let's see what students would do at this at this particular point? So um, we have if you ran into a problem at work, what would you do? Let's see what you what what would you now uh, do? If you ran into a problem at work. What would you do? Come on, everybody. Let's start to get you voting. Yeah. Hey, guys, there's no right and wrong. So, you know, we're not <laughs> going to pull you up if you put any of the options. We don't even know who's pulling for what. Yeah. So please put in your answers because it makes the conversation very interesting that way. Okay. So it's a skewed one. Of, I mean, obviously, it has 87%, 88 and counting now saying brainstorm and solve it yourself or collaborate with colleagues first. And exactly what I told you uh, through the explanation as well, that uh, when you're looking at problem solving, what is really going to help is your ability to brainstorm, your ability to talk to different people. And like we said earlier, that yes, there's a problem, but also what is the solution? 
okay start thinking uh and putting yourself in the next in line's foot as well and not just that hey i have a problem and my manager will solve it or my boss will solve it you know so let's try and also uh develop uh, that skill set because that's going to set you apart uh from the shaft that is going to be there in the organization second aspect is working with people okay uh this is something that is uh, definitely also uh important especially in the current scenario where you are looking at different skill sets of people uh you know this is literally like many in body one in mind so which means that uh we have different people we have different backgrounds we have diversity uh, we have a lot of uh, you know experiences which are very unique but when we come together for a goal or when we come together for a task assigned to us we become one in mind and keep that goal in in place which is very important for each one of us to thrive from here so again if you look at the skill sets uh, that we're looking at to develop in here one of course is teamwork you know of course that you, and you know it you've done this in henry for you all for sure esprit de corps and how important it is uh, you know build on your efficiency work through outcomes you know develop yourself and of course take your uh, people along with you so these become very important aspects uh, for companies companies are looking at smaller teams on smaller on various projects and therefore it becomes an important aspect for you to uh, enhance your ability to work in different teams and work and again encourage yourself to work in different teams like in college when you had projects do you still have that black book project uh, and your of course your uh, you know your uh, projects which you do internally in every subject it's important to keep uh, rotating with different groups because that's how you are going to be able to develop this particular teamwork and ability to collaborate second is interpersonal skills and again communication is a two way street uh, you know we're doing this poll uh, we're doing uh, you know we're trying to have a conversation with uh, shivani on the screen or rishita or of course sydney who came on and so on so that is something that's going to enhance your ability to talk to a different people and uh, also be able to understand different mindsets and apply it into your work uh, your ability to work with different people and your ability to enhance your interpersonal skills is something that is going to also enhance your leadership skills and that is something that's very very important as well and lastly i think empathy uh, if there's one thing that uh, this pandemic has taught each one of us is to uh, no longer judge uh, anybody basis uh, you know what they have or have not uh, the pandemic or the virus did not see whether you're rich or you're poor or you're from a third world country or you're from a first world country and so on and so forth or your economic stats and so on right uh, it taught us that it brought the entire world down to its feet it uh, taught us to understand different individuals and the challenges that they have and also uh, build on to this particular em empathy aspect today uh, you know in the last uh, few weeks only there have been raging conversations on uh, mental health and how uh, it's it's hitting each one of us not just uh, you know senior up there in the management it's hitting students it's hitting uh, us as mothers you know or em or employees and so on this has become very very important as a as a starting point or as a conversation and managers need to take care of this uh sitting out of your home uh, you know where a lot of people may not have that much of space there may be space constraints where indian joint families we live all together to work in an environment like this and work from home may not be easy uh i remember when we uh, moved to the online or uh, the virtual learning uh, process you know of course i was very happy in the initial first two weeks because i had to i got the chance to beat away traffic from santa cruz to lower perel and back i mean achal ma'am is another story altogether uh, and even somia here and many other such students and my colleagues but over a you know quick period of time we realized that our colleagues did not necessarily have a laptop at their disposal or uh, you know even internet connections which were uh, uh, providing that kind of a bandwidth Uh, for each one of them to be there on meetings or run classrooms for this is something that we really had to uh, develop as an organization and try and make sure that everybody was comfortable in their uh, workspaces from home also uh, you know initially and as teachers too there were a lot of talk about burnout 
you know, it, it uh, there were meetings and there were lots of meetings. And then we had, uh, you know, faculty development programs or we had exams to uh, think about and assessments that went online. And, and imagine how it must have been for, uh, for the industry or for corporate houses. Uh, one of the constant things that kept coming up through a lot of human resource based articles was that the boundaries uh, really started uh, diminishing. Uh, you know, so uh, you got work calls at any point. Uh, there was no concept of a nine to five or a nine to six as work hours. You were 24 by seven working. This really started taking a lot of a toll on, on people. And it is only now that we have started acknowledging that there is something like a time off or a space that is for professional uh, work. There have been a lot of organizations which have given no Zoom days on a particular day of the week. You know, a lot of them have also said that it is, uh, it is not allowed to hold any meetings beyond a particular time frame. Uh, you know, uh, there are some people uh, like me, myself, and of course, my colleague here, you know, we are 24 by 7 working. But uh, it's taken us also some adaptability to understand that we need to switch off or we need to. So we remind each other that, uh, you know, now chill, now switch off, go see Netflix or, you know, I mean, so these are some things that are very, very important because our families need us too. Right. I mean, from their point of view, they see you at home. Your mom sees you at home. Your dad sees you at home. They want you at one that time with you as well. So be very mindful of uh, these skills as well, because uh, the day to day motions are going to be very difficult for organizations to handle. Let's look at the next skill. So um, we're looking at self-management. This has again become very, very crucial. Uh, especially in, a, in, this, uh, in this environment. So uh, one of the terms that you will, you, uh, you will hear very often now is resilience, okay? And that's something that's coming around a lot that, uh, you know, so-and-so really is very resilient. I mean, I would say the traffic cops and the cops who are doing Nakabandi day to day are really resilient. The Corona warriors, which we call as doctors, I mean, just when they thought that it was normalizing, look at how the infrastructure has collapsed. And you really need to have that skill set of resilience to be able to go in there day in and day out and deal with a not so happy situation. So uh, one of the aspects that we must definitely display to be in, uh, you know, in tune or in sync with this uh, dynamic world is uh, building resilience and flexibility. Secondly, Yes, there is stress. Uh, the stress could be because business is collapsing or numbers not being achieved, productivity being impacted. Uh, you know, while we enjoy the dynamism and uh, the so-called quote unquote new world, uh, there is going to be a large level of stress, uh, which could be uh, ranging from different levels for a lot of people. Uh, the first uh, stage of the lockdown, uh, when I, uh, you know, my cook wasn't coming, for me, it was, a, it was a challenge because I said, oh my gosh, now I'll have to start making four meals of the day from just doing one or two dishes, uh, you know, through the day. And that used to stress me out because I had a full-time job. I had uh, the family to look after. And of course, my husband who was still going to work because he's in, into essential services, that did stress me out. But proper time management, trying to look out for solutions to uh, fast track the way you, uh, you, know, you work through the day. That's something that's very important. And organizations and as managers, you have to really uh, pay attention to, uh, you know, to these small strains, which may seem uh, go unnoticed. And of course, you know, flexibility. I think uh, sometimes you need to be able to uh, trust your uh, your colleagues or your uh, peers as well. In India, this whole concept of work from home was not there. Okay, we did not know of it as as existed, and one of the strongest reasons for that was because uh, we had trust issues. Right, we always thought that the employee may uh, may be just watching a Netflix movie or must be chilling somewhere and not getting the job done. But when you were forced to work from home, when you had to be flexible enough to adapt to, uh, to a situation like this, uh, the focus and the conversations uh, all around started moving towards productivity. 
So while you are looking at an eight, eight and a half hour job, which used to be what it used to be in the, you know, in the pre-COVID era, you are now looking at, let's say, six hours of work or seven or even eight hours of work. But what's key is that how productive has the employee been in that particular time frame? And that is something that you're going to be also, uh, you know, enhancing through your own self-management in the way you are flexible enough to adapt to a situation uh, like uh, this. Um, shall we take a poll again? So yes, ma'am. Yeah, the question is, work has been, and I'd like faculty also to participate, work has been hectic and tiring lately. What's the best way forward? And the options are take a step back, recoup and return, or keep powering through and risk burnout. Well, we still have people who say risk burnout, huh? About 55 of you have voted and, uh, all right, this is interesting. We'll end the poll now. Yeah. So uh, thankfully, you know, 54% of you do say that take a step back, recoup and return. But um, uh, what's alarming though for me is that uh, there is a section of you which feels keep powering through and risk burnout. Um, while of course you may have your reasons for this, uh, but I would uh, definitely encourage you to rethink this. Uh, you know, I think it's very important uh, right from physical, mental health, and to avoid what is now world over being acknowledged as an online fatigue. So, uh, you know, definitely uh, relook at uh, your priorities on that stage and kind of uh, see if you can manage yourself better through these, uh, uh, through these ways. Okay, a lot of you did, uh, you know, put in uh, the emphasis on technology and development as a key skill. And yes, definitely, it is an important aspect to uh, pay attention to. You know, one of the things that you hear very often is uh, there's so much uncertainty, right? And uh, that is uh, that's something that you probably have been talking. You know, it's very it's very casual of you of each one of us to say that um, yeah, no idea what's what's going to happen, and you know we don't know where we're headed and so on and so forth. Um, I always like to uh, you know prep prop myself a little bit with some positivity. So uh, I think uh, yes, while it is uncertain. Maybe, uh, you know, what you could replace that word with is that uh, we're in a dynamic environment. You know, it just kind of makes you feel a little more empowered too and, uh, you know, gives you a little different perspective to looking at things, which brings on two aspects which became very, very uh, important for each one of us to look at, which is agility. Uh, you know, very, very important that we are, we have to have to develop a skill set which is going to make you really, really agile. Look at your college. Look at the colleges around us. Uh, it wasn't easy for a lot of us teachers to go into a classroom which is virtual. Some of us uh, did not have uh, the skill sets to, uh, you know, to take up a class like this uh, using the you know, the whiteboard and so many other tools. And then, of course, we started gradually discovering. Kahoot and so many other tools that are available for uh, to use in the classroom. For example, this poll, right? I mean, this is something that my colleagues introduced me to to make sessions more interactive. I'm equally learning. And uh, there is a different generation which is also trying to adapt to this. Uh, that is where I think, uh, you know, we each one of us have demonstrated a strong skill set of being agile. Uh, very important. I think that is what's going to be a key takeaway for all of us in this particular environment and in this uh, new world that is, uh, that's, that we're all part of. So while yes, hard skills are important, you know, I really encourage each of you to not, uh, uh, you know, give uh, less importance to or focus less on your soft skills. 
So definitely work on your emotional intelligence, on your leadership ability, on your ability to coordinate with people. These are very important aspects and uh, it's, it's very critical for each one of us to focus on our soft skills while knowledge and uh, you know the, the information that you gather through professional or formal uh, programs is important and of course discussions, but your soft skills are going to be very, very key for each one of us to uh, move forward in this world. Uh, I'm sure you've heard this term called the gig economy and uh, where you are now as part of this placement drive for your college, it's something that you may uh, come across a lot especially with the job offers that may come your way. Uh, you know, uh, while uh, our parents and even a certain section of my uh, generation has been very used to having uh, some sense of work security or a, or a job which is going to be, uh, you know, uh, classified as a particular uh, level in, in the organization. What each one of you millennials are going out for is something that's known as the gig economy. There will be a temporary positions. There will be lots of projects that will be available to you. Uh, these may be consultancy projects or just uh, project-based work that you may be given out. Uh, it's, uh, it's really, really important that you are able to uh, bag these opportunities with the skill sets that we've discussed uh, because this is going to be the way forward. A lot of companies have given away their commercial spaces because they realize they don't need so many people uh, in an office space. And that there are uh, large sections of jobs which could function from home. Like education is headed towards blended learning. So, uh, you know, we will have to relook at uh, some aspect of physical learning and some aspect of uh, learning which is going to be online. And that's going to be the way forward. And for this to so therefore fit into this gig economy and the VUCA world, Two aspects that you have to really, really work on as a skill set is agility and adaptability. If you're not agile, you're not uh, dynamic enough to, uh, to you know, move with the times and adapt with the times, be sure you're going to be left behind. You know, this is something that we have to have to focus irrespective of the number of experiences or the number of years that you have in your particular job, uh, whether you're starting out fresh like some of you are, I think this is something that's very, very critical for us to adapt to. And yes, technology and development is going to be able to bring in this agility and adaptability for us to move forward. Um, some, as, some key things that I thought besides your uh, you know, social skills or the soft skills that, I'm, uh, that we spoke about is uh, the importance of social media. So just to let's do a little quick thumbs up if each one of you could be a little interactive. How many of you have a LinkedIn account or a LinkedIn profile? Samia and I'll just help me uh, you know, with, uh, if people are showcasing their thumb. Yeah, come on everybody. I want you all to answer this. How many of you, uh, Shubham has raised his hand. Anybody else? No, How many of you? Thumbs up. We yeah. Checked. Okay. Anybody else? Have six participate. I'm um, participants are increasing. But yeah, come on. Okay. Uh, how many of you have that last time? I'm going to ask you. How many of you have a LinkedIn account or LinkedIn profile? I have about eight participants who have uh, said so. Ten, eleven. Okay, the numbers seem to be growing. So let's take a look at uh, the next one. Instagram. This one should be very popular. How many of you have an Instagram profile? Okay. How many of you are on Facebook? I feel good that there are still people on Facebook. Huh? Achal ma'am and Samia ma'am. I thought uh, I was the only one out there. And lastly, how many of you are on Twitter? <clears throat> okay. All right. Now, uh, you know, while you are all in the placement drive, 
uh, something that is very, very crucial is to create a LinkedIn profile. If you still haven't, you must do that uh, definitely because this is where you're going to find a lot of opportunities to interact as well as uh, talk to uh, you know, your uh, future employers or, or figure out what opportunities are there. There are lots of discussions that are happening. Your company profiles are in here. So very, very crucial for each one of you to uh, figure out your, uh, uh, prof uh, your uh, LinkedIn profile. Uh, at ISME, we do a lot of such sessions as well, where uh, we are doing even one recent uh, one coming up soon on a LinkedIn uh, session and how you can empower yourself by using a LinkedIn profile. Uh, reach out to us and we'll, uh, we'll we can uh, figure out how to uh, even engage you with you on that one. Uh, while Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter are very uh, crucial too, uh, you know, be careful of what you post. Now that each one of you are in a placement mode, okay, uh, make sure you spend this weekend to pull out posts that are not going to necessarily showcase yourself in a positive life. While your argument may be, it's my social media handle, it's my personal life, and so on and so forth, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, uh, we, you know, uh, we are uh, in, a, in an environment where you are going to have a lot of people who are going to look you up and are going to be able to formulate opinions about you just based on one post or a picture. Uh, the smartest thing to do is make sure at least your profile pictures, which are open, you know, are uh, appropriate are not showing you with a tongue sticking out or uh, pouting. So, you know, while they're very cool, I know, but let's try and, uh, you know, put, a, put uh, pictures that give a very positive and a professional approach to you. And uh, another thing is that, you know, uh, many a times we have put uh, certain comments or statuses which are uh, probably where you think you're being cool and you're talking about maybe the government, you're talking about a policy or how college sucks and so on and so forth. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm, uh, the, the, the world that each one of you are in is where uh, digital, uh, you know, uh, digital footprint is something that you are going to have to deal with. So uh, imagine this, if you get into a job which is in uh, sustainability, or something we're looking at, maybe corporate social responsibility. And you have gone and put a post maybe in your uh, fifth standard or eighth standard, I don't know when you went on to your social media handles, and which talked about how uh, you know, junking uh, stuff in, uh, in the ocean was cool, or uh, you know, it was uh, that a, a, a particular uh, policy of, uh, of, a, of, a pro, of a product was uh, not, uh, not very, didn't go down very well with you. It's going to be somebody who will, uh, you know, go out there and pull that out, okay? And uh, there are lots of instances where, especially when you move up into the uh, professional ladder, you see that uh, people dig out comments like these or dig out instances like these and you're, you're uh, you know, going to be uh, uh, kind of trolled for, uh, for something uh, like that. So while social media and digital presence is very important, or make, be sure that you are able to handle this and handle each of your handles relevantly as well and how you interact with, uh, with yourself. Uh, lastly, I'm just going to sum up with, uh, you know, that uh, there are certain aspects uh, of the skills that we have discussed today. And uh, each of these skill sets that we've, uh, we've covered today are basically transferable. You can uh, apply them to any job or any role. And uh, it's important that we are able to develop a unique skill set, uh, you know, something that you are able to adapt and apply very comfortably into different roles that you may, um, uh, you know, move around. Like uh, going back to the Singapore uh, government example, where you're looking at uh, a skill base which is going to be different levels, whether you're a manager, you're a student, you're a senior manager. So, you know, go out there and really, really, uh, you know, apply for these skill sets. Uh, these are some of the unique skill sets that I would really encourage each one of you to enhance. So whether it's critical thinking, collaboration, communication, compassion and empathy, agility, adaptability, these are really what the skills of the new age or the new, uh, new normal are really going to be focusing on. 
And you know what? Um, uh, you know, you may say that, oh yeah, but the Singapore government did that. Don't wait for the government. I mean, nobody's going to go and launch any programs for you. Uh, you know, my, like the topic, uh, the title of this session is be the architect of your career. So you take the onus, you take the responsibility of enhancing these transferable skills. There are lots of tools available. You have Coursera, you have Udemy and many others uh, which are giving you skill sets and short courses right in your home. Uh, you know, and there are lots of free courses available too. I told you earlier, I have been inundated with online skill programs that I can you know, take part of now that I want to look at developing my skill sets. So this is something that's very, very important. Uh, and honestly, uh, you know, these are now, all of these which you see on your screen now, they are frankly life skills. You know, that is what it's all about, that uh, to enhance yourself for any job or any uh, prospect, it's important that you really sharpen your sword of skill sets in the form of life skills. So I'll stop here. And I hope you found this uh, meaningful. Uh, if there are any questions, we could uh, open the floor. I mean, I'll leave it to Lakshmi, ma'am, and Melissa. Yes. Uh, dear student, uh, now if, uh, uh, if you have any question uh, or query, you can raise. Please raise your hand. I will unmute and then uh, you can ask. Any comment, anything. I mean, anything that you think uh, we could cover, whatever. Please feel free to uh, share that. Yes, dear student, please, uh, if you have any query, question, please ask. You can unmute uh, yourself and uh, then uh, you can ask. Or you can write in chat box, I will. Yes, I think they're still absorbing uh, the skills. Uh, that yes, are... <laughs> yes. <laughs> so absolutely yes, yes. fine. Um, you know, I so will, what I'll I... do is uh, I'll uh, just uh, share uh, an email address and uh, you can definitely reach out to, uh, to me or to anyone from my team if you need any particular uh, guidance or mentorship, uh, you know, where you think you could probably, or you want to have a discussion, you know, it's perfectly fine. Uh, you can reach out and I'd be more than happy to uh, connect you to a relevant person or, of course, uh, you know, uh, talk to you myself about uh, what career opportunities or how you can narrow down your uh, your options available to you. Yeah, so if that's fine with you, Lakshmi, ma'am, I'll drop my email address. Yes, yes. yes please do that. Sure. I've done that in the chat box. Yeah. Should we close? Milind, are there any questions? Uh, I th I'll, I'll check. Uh, I think there is no question from yeah, your student side. Okay. Yes. Uh, Dr. can I proceed for vote of thanks? Please do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you so Milind, much. before that, if you can ask everybody to, uh, you know, uh, on their cameras and you can take a screenshot. Okay. For okay, record. okay. Yes, yes, yes. Dear student, please uh, switch on your video. Uh, we will take a snap. See, I told you all, everything that you do online is important. This will give you the attendance. Yes, yes, yes. Dear student, please uh, switch on your video. Then I'll take it. You know, ma'am, there is a question in the chat box for you. Yeah. So Bharat, there are many books actually, you know, if you're looking at leadership, uh, you can uh, definitely even, you know, start with um, 
it's as basic as Steve Jobs or uh, even Stephen Covey. So these would definitely help you from uh, from the basics of skill set point of view. It also depends on uh, if there's a particular skill that you would like to develop. You know, so um, I think you can start reading bases on that uh, because if there's something on digital marketing or you know, so aspects like these, you can definitely start looking from there. You can always write to me, and we can narrow it down for you. <clears throat> Thank you, dear students. What would you be, as a question, sorry, from Sydney, if I can take that. What would be your Thank advice you. to someone who wants to shift from BCom to data science? Yeah, of course you can. I mean, uh, you know, like there are uh, certain postgraduate opportunities in uh, data, like we ourselves have a research and business analytics to your postgraduate program. So uh, there are options. Uh, you may find some aspects of, uh, you know, uh, the number crunching a little uh, challenging, but I think you can manage. Any technical skill we request, we, I guess you mean we require in organizations. Oh, you know, so um, if there's one thing that I always uh, flag myself for is not paying attention uh, when my uh, teachers were teaching me Excel. And that is something uh, I think uh, is like a basic. You need to know Excel. Uh, when it comes to tally and all again, you know, there are lots of other softwares. And again, depending on what career path you are choosing, because if you're going into chartered accountancy or, or you know something like that, then maybe yes, you would need. But each one of you on this call, uh, if you haven't learned Excel, Please use your time right now to learn that. Very, very important. I mean, uh, you know, I struggle many a time. So it becomes very important for you to learn that. And even like presentation skills, right? Like we all have learned PPT or PowerPoint, but uh, there are so many new uh, tools available. Like the girls are from my team, uh, you know, they've taught me, they tried to teach me Canva. And, uh, you know, like, I think taking it one step forward, uh, even for Archal was uh, Soumya taking it on Keynote. So, you know, there are a lot of other tools available and each one of us are learning through those and these become important aspects. What benefits, uh, sorry, there's one more, any foreign language you suggest to learn? Um, you know, so uh, this again is a little subjective, but um, there is, uh, there are a lot of people who are moving towards uh, Spanish and, uh, you know, that's something that uh, people are uh, working because you also see that there's a lot of businesses internationally that are coming around from Mexico. So Mexicans are taking over at least the uh, uh, you know, pa pa part of America. So maybe that's a language. Uh, some of us have learned French in college. So if you want to just, uh, you know, enhance it or advance it, maybe that would uh, benefit um, uh, of course, there is also uh, pre-pandemic, uh, uh, there's been a lot of thrust on learning Mandarin. Uh, for some time, I guess, you know, uh, operations with China might be a little slowed down. But uh, look, uh, China and India, you know, are, are where uh, math the population is. And there's a lot of uh, uh, labor intensive industries that can be set up. So maybe uh, that could be an aspect that you would want to consider by learning uh, Mandarin or Chinese from there. What benefits we get in an organization working as an intern? Um, internships are really something as I call as, uh, you know, uh, as the compass of your life. I am uh, a big advocate of uh, picking up internship opportunities. Uh, and uh, you'll be surprised. I mean, most of you are in Tiva. I'm, I'm not sure of uh, everybody's background, but uh, in the last one year or so, I have seen a shift where uh, students uh, from grade nine and 10 are also picking up internships, you know? And uh, I really do advocate and encourage them because I think when you start as young as 14, 15 and 16 and you pick up varied experiences is what also helps you to pick up career choices or or like Lakshmi ma'am and we were talking of, you know, dealing with, uh, in your case, problem of plenty. So, you know, where you have uh, so many options to choose out of. So uh, what we do, especially at, at our institution is where, uh, you know, we have made it mandatory for students to do an internship. They are given a credit as well as uh, marks for the same. Uh, it, it's mandatory to do a six to eight weeks internship. 
where we encourage them right from first year to look at varied internships. So, uh, you know, my student Soumya, who's here with me, I know she's picked up an internship, uh, you know, with an NGO. She's also worked in a digital marketing firm. Uh, she's also now uh, working in an education space. So she's trying to build up a lot of experiences, and this is something that really gives you a profile advantage uh, because. Look, when I talk about agility, adaptability, and being dynamic, how do you showcase the skill sets? It's through the experiences that you have picked up in this, uh, you know, tenure of two, three years of your graduation or years and so on. Also, what it also does is that it enables you to narrow down on what you want. I'll give you my own real life example. Uh, I uh, was a student of HR college. I did BCom. We didn't have BAF and all that at that time. Uh, but we had, uh, you know, BCom with accounts and BComs with uh, business management. Lakshmi, ma'am, you may relate to this, right? So uh, because I was good in accounts, uh, I thought the obvious thing to do was in third year to specialize in the three papers of accounts, financial accounting, management accounting, and auditing, and so on, okay? But midway through that, I realized that we had this subject called uh, MHRD right, uh, which is management and human resource development or something else now, but it's, it's pretty much the same, uh, you know, uh, overall. And I discovered my uh, love for human resources. And here, while I was thinking I'm going to get into something with strategy and accounts and finance and something like that, I uh, really realized that I had a passion for another subject and that's where I changed tracks with my postgraduate studies and all my postgraduate uh, qualifications have been veered towards human resource management, okay? I had no opportunity for internships while I was studying. And I feel that this is something that uh, you know uh, you you should expose yourself to because you're able to uh, enhance this mindset of yours as well. And look, what am I doing today? I'm into teaching, right? Uh, when I got into teaching in 2003 at HR College, it was uh, it was a short term uh, assignment that I thought I'd take up. But I think when your vocation becomes your vacation. When you start enjoying what you do, uh, you know, work on a day-to-day -day basis is not so cumbersome. And all my learnings of HR or human resources through learning and development and training, which is what I, you know, I specialized in my master's, is what I put into my classroom. So that is how, you know, uh, it kind of works. But yeah, I mean, you guys have an opportunity to pick up internships. Please go out there and take, take that. Uh, Sneha says, ma'am, can you send us the details for internship? It will be very helpful for us. Sneha, you need to write to me and, uh, you know, we can see how, uh, what kind of internships or what sort of mentorship you can develop. So we can talk about that. Predna Jadav writes, language is important or experience and knowledge is important. What's your opinion on this? Uh, Predna, if you could unmute yourself and I'd like to just talk to you a little bit about your question. Predna, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Hi. So Predna, I just wanted Hello. to understand what do you mean by language is important? Do you mean communication skills? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of us who are uh, not necessarily well versed with speaking. Okay, uh, every time I have to make a presentation, I am very nervous. I mean, both my girls today would tell you that I was uh, very, very nervous. It may not show, it may not come across, but I am always not sure of how I'm going to reach out. And this virtual platform doesn't necessarily add to my, uh, you know, uh, to the way I am. So it really adds to my nervousness in that sense. So uh, building communication skills is something that is very critical. We, we did cover it in the session also that while you know, written and oral communication is important. It's the non-verbal communication, which is also important. And that's going to be something that you will have to work towards. And this is also because you need to get your point or your thought process or your thought across, right? When we spoke about problem solving skills, we said that 
go with the problem and the solution but if you are not able to effectively put the solution out to your manager he's not going to be able to uh, understand what what the solution or what you're trying to offer from as well now your second part to the question is is experience and knowledge important uh listen knowledge is important in the sense that it gives you a foundation so uh you know while i know uh, you all of you especially your generation come uh, comes across uh, amazing stars who are uh, who have dropped out of college or who dropped out of school and then they become uh, these uh, amazing uh, uh you know entrepreneurs or, or star, they launch these startups and things like that uh, but i still am a little old school i feel that uh, no education goes waste i just gave you an example how i did hr in learning and development and training and i'm able to use that in my classrooms and in my uh, career that i am following for the last 18 years so it's very important experience is also important because that enables you to tackle situations effectively or also uh, work with people effectively a uh, student psychology uh, is very different right i mean uh, look at you all you're la- suddenly active at what is it 130 in the afternoon okay and uh, you all are all up there i could see your beautiful smile and uh, you know i'm so happy to see you with your video on and she's been uh, you know with her non verbal communication uh, reacting to the things that i'm saying and i couldn't stop noticing you uh, but this is what it is 130 in the afternoon when i would like to have my hot gujarati thali waiting for me uh you know i am here uh, with a population that has woken up and is now wanting to ask questions right so uh, these are experiences uh these are experiences that i i take into my day to day classes and that becomes very important so uh you know while we go into class for example uh, you know we always spend about 5 minutes or so on peer to peer learning and that peer to peer learning actually is me learning from your less peers you know because uh, like when i have my team meetings with my uh, with my faculty and all and i'll always ask them acha acha but tell me what are you all watching these days and then they'll say uh, the serpent and then they'll say uh, which is an emily in paris and uh, dorithika again is smiling this is only to uh, you know i think uh, pay to the gallery which is rithika at this point because she is the only one who is reacting to my uh, to my netflix list but the, this is important for me to understand how i'm going to use my uh, weekend time now so the list of uh, which is the other one you all have told me the bold type which was the one was it seven series i mean they tell me seven series i mean lakshmi ma'am i can barely last you know 17 minutes of an episode and they give me these series which are like ma'am you must watch the bold type and that so that's my plan rithika is it good the bold type have you watched it Come on, unmute yourself now. You need to talk to me. No, 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 no. Rithika, you must say something. She's one of our very, very good students. One of the very regular and bright students that we have. Rithika, you must say something. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, Rithika. Did you find the session? Uh, good afternoon. Why? Yeah. What did you like? Yes, ma'am. It was very helpful. What did I, you take? Um, I. Can I pin her? Can we pin her, Acha? It, it yeah. was one second. Rithika, I want to talk. So at least I feel like I'm talking to you in the first front row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, ma'am, yes, I did really like this session. It was very helpful. A lot of things. Um, I I feel like I'm more in, like things were lined up for me really well. So I think. What's the I one skill you think you want to session. develop? you what what's the one skill like or the skill that you feel that hey i didn't think about this one so maybe i should work on this oh uh, ma'am i really uh, out of the uh, question sets that were prepared all of them were very helpful but the first one um, i really like the first one cuz that is actually uh, if you go to see the now nowadays that's how all the organizations have become since the there's so much diversity and so many people with so many opinions and ideas it is very important because it's it you can't avoid problems problems are going to happen if not today then maybe tomorrow so you need to know how to solve them yeah so i think that's one skill i really need to work on and develop 
You're so right, you know, because even um, what we are going through is, uh, yes, definitely a problem, but we need to find solutions, right? I mean, uh, yes. and think of unique ways of uh, solving the problem. That's very, very important. Uh, since you appreciated the poll, I must tell you that it was not created by me. Uh, you know, my uh, left hand and my right hand, it's very important to give credit where it's due. So uh, Atul, Nam, and Soumya have really, really uh, helped me with the questions, uh, you know, because I just am, uh, sometimes I think I'm an absent-minded professor who has these abstract ideas, and then they put it together, and then they tell me, okay, this is what the flow of your presentation should look like, because I just go and find random things, and then they put it together. But I think this is where a team becomes so important, Right. And uh, we learn from uh, the teams, uh, you know, like these also. And I'm, I'm hoping they also learn something from me. Uh, so uh, we have one more question. And uh, in an organization, people need various types of communication skills and good language. We can deal with it. So I think that's a comment. Okay. Uh, Bharat, Bharat says, if the authority knows that soft skills is very important for the students to pace with the world, then why is it not taught us in our journey? So, uh, Bharat, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Hi. Hi, ma'am. You put your Good video afternoon. on. I, I'd like to talk to you. Uh, actually, I can't because I'm cooking right now. You're cooking? What are you yeah. cooking? Dal. Dal. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, dal pakare. <laughs> so yes, that yeah. is uh, like that, like they say, right? Okay. So, uh, you know, Bharat. Ma'am, ma ma he's techno savvy person. He's what? Sorry, sir. Te techno savvy person. Achha, he's techno <laughs> oh, okay. Amazing. Well, so he's got a skill set already that is ready for him, uh, you know, for in this new normal world. So, see, it's interesting, right? Ritika picks up problem solving. Bharat's picking up technology. I mean, I'm sure there's some others who somebody talks, Neha is talking about communication. We're getting there. We're going to assimilate these skills and work together uh, as a team. So Bharat, uh, you know, uh, your question is that if the soft skills are so important, then why is it not taught? Um, I uh, definitely have a little bit of a different opinion here. I think uh, a lot of us, uh, you know, in the education space, including your college, is really focusing a lot on the need for uh, soft skills. So you need to also understand that uh, uh, colleges or schools, you know, uh, unfortunately have to adhere to a particular curriculum as well, right? I mean, that's uh, that becomes uh, in a way binding for us to teach you a course which needs to be taught. So if you may be in BMS or so on and so forth. But a lot of institutions today are taking uh, the lead and look at your institution as well, right? I mean, you're doing a three-day conclave on, uh, you know, it's your, uh, the education conclave, which is leading you to a placement lineup and placement opportunities and so on. Uh, one of the things they have done is held a session on soft skills today. So uh, I think, uh, isn't this uh, an example enough that they are taking you on that journey? Uh, and, you know, I think uh, what I would reinforce is that uh, in this new normal world, we need to stop waiting for somebody else to take uh, take the you know make the move or take uh, you know take uh, bring in that opportunity i'm going back to my title it says be the architect of your career you decide you've got a little bit of an overview of what are the soft skills and the hard skills and this you know different levels of the opportunities I've given you a few sources. Start looking up what the World Economic Forum is saying. Go and see what a McKinsey report is saying. Are we doing that? You know, the onus of responsibility needs to be shared. And I think that is when true learning happens. So uh, you feel a soft skill is uh, lacking in, uh, in, in what you want to develop. Go out there. Your college has given you a platform. I've dropped my email address. Reach out. There may be other mentors you will speak to the day. Reach out to them and uh, see how they can mentor you and uh, develop a skill. I reach out to my students every time I want to understand something, uh, you know, different 
that comes around. I mean, they introduced me to reads. So I used to put stories, Ritika's again smiling. I love it. Uh, you know, and I used to make uh, videos and, and put up stories and all of that. And one of my students said, uh, what you be putting all these videos and all? It's time to up your game by going into the real game. So I said, oh, okay, how do you make reels? I still struggle, but I make reels, you know. So uh, that's that. That's how you're uh, developing your technology skills, trying to get there, trying to be as cool as, uh, as you are. And, you know, I always say this, that... Um, I am forever 25. That's my hashtag. You are as young or as old as you feel. And when you are, uh, you know, happy with, with what you are doing, what you're feeling, you're going to be able to uh, really bring out your creative best. So I surround myself with young people because it's important to keep learning. And I will only learn from you. Okay, so Sydney, my friend, says it is good the soft skills. Yes, Harat, dal pak gai. Yeah. No, no, ma'am. I'm a little bit of a... My question was from a general student. Because when I knew that in 2015, I knew that soft skills are very much important. So I started long back. I developed many skills like digital marketing, then stock market, sales, marketing, and various, many more. Cooking. Yes. It's a skill I don't have. Photography as well. Fantastic. So my question was for like a general because many students don't know about it. I'll tell you. So Bharat, kya hota hai? Like for example, something that uh, you know at least uh, I'm trying to do uh, through uh, through my institution also is that uh, Pan India we do something known as boot camps. A lot of your students have benefited from that as well. Where we are trying to build entrepreneurship skills or you know what we call as dice design, in innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurship. A lot of institutions are doing. Uh, see, uh, like I said, it's also bringing down an element of how much, uh, you know, both parties, which is the learner and the teacher or the institution is able to offer because of certain constraints of uh, timelines of curriculum, you know, delivery, examinations and so many other things. But I think the trend is changing. Uh, yes, it's a little slow, but maybe, uh, you know, it's changing. And Jesse, you said that from 2015, you realize that soft skills are the way to go. I think what's important is we transfer these conversations around, right? That is when great transformation will happen. If my student didn't tell me reels were the way to go, I would not have known. So I would still be making story videos. So I think what's important is we pass this, uh, you know, pass this knowledge around as well and uh, the information, and that's when you make great impact. Now, yeah, so I think Sydney, I kind of have, uh, you know, covered your comment as well that it is good that soft skills are being taught, but this is a very late stage. I strongly feel things like public speaking, critical thinking, guidance, finance, coding, and other soft skills should be taught from younger ages. Yes, definitely. Uh, you know, but like I said, uh, you know, we do see trends changing. And uh, listen, I am just not in agreement with you when you say that it is late. It is never late to learn. I barely uh, used to manage cooking because I don't enjoy cooking. So when Bharat says he's cooking dal, I mean, you saw the you saw my face light up. But uh, three months of the lockdown last year, and I think Archal will definitely back me on that one, from the first one month or so of panic to now uh, being able to plan menus. Okay, and cook for my family. My family has never gone hungry. We're a Gujarati family. We love food. Everything is about food. Okay, so that, that is nice. That is true. However, yes, but uh, um, like if you if these things were thought to kids from a very younger point, you know, like in from school itself, uh, they would have a bigger competitive they advantage. They are Sydney. They are Sydney. They are. But you know, like I said, that um, schools also start responding to uh, to changes over a period of time, right? I mean, uh, look at Bombay. It has over uh, three, four hundred schools. We've worked with uh, a large number of schools, but it's, it's it takes time to change the mindset. See, I mean, another, you know, like uh, even our parents, right? I mean, if you tell them that uh, I want to be a chef, okay, and if you have done a BMS program, it may not adapt to it very quickly 
you know ma'am if you don't mind i'd like to yeah, also yeah. add for uh, siddhi one point that you know it's really important to also understand that while things are changing with pace we are also learning and relearning so it's not that these skill sets were always there or always required we didn't know one year ago that digitization was so important that we all needed to learn how to use a zoom platform do you know also that zoom was going bankrupt just yes. before the pandemic zoom was going bankrupt and when this happened they relaunched the app out there they got an ipo and zoom today is a listed company so who knew we were actually going to use a platform like this we never we, we never knew anything beyond a skype or an orkut and today we have so many platforms so i think while the world is inventing we also need to reinvent ourselves and keep upskilling so it doesn't you know for example for senior managers they never understood the concept of making a presentation they always learned how to use reports so for them that transition to go online to use presentations and do all of this it's always a learning process so you know it's it's i think steve jobs coming again to me and saying that stay hungry stay foolish you have to have the drive to keep uh, you know upskilling yourself otherwise you are going to become redundant one day you know so it's not that the schools can only impart it or the colleges can only impart it the journey of learning now comes to us as an individual and how much we want to take on ourselves and uh, sydney related to coding you should know basic fundamentals of mathematics instead of uh, by hiding all that syntax uh, dear uh, sydney you should know all basics of uh, basic fundamentals of mathematics then you can write uh, any code and uh, ma'am our sydney is our brilliant student from uh, of course. you know i must say that um, uh, generally the gentry of the students from your college has been really really uh, very uh, high and they high potential students uh, of course this is uh, largely across as well because uh, you know like since we're talking about dal and it's also lunch time that uh, you know uh, i don't know kya khate hain but uh, whatever you know they eat they are, they are a brilliant and a bright lot so they're very different from all our uh, students are brilliant sincere yes. hard working yes absolutely So I think with this, uh, you know, let's uh, this discussion can keep going yes, on. Yes. There is <laughs> there's no end to this. But uh, yes, feel yes. free to reach out if there's anything. I've dropped your uh, my yes. uh, email address. Your college yes, yes. has my coordinates, so you know you can definitely, Lakshmi Ma'am, Milind Sir, I'd be more than happy to come back and address any specific uh, you know areas that they would like to. But uh, we really hope, as team is me, that uh, this was uh, meaningful. and uh, you found this uh, to have some kind of value creation yes. thank you thank you for this thank opportunity you. i think yes. uh, this was the best uh, way to have your sp- have spend your saturday i mean look at my yes. two girls also they are also yes. now smiling but ritika yes. your smile is the best you know my two girls ka smile doesn't match up to them thank you ritika you thank really you, made my saturday so or uh, you know yes. really a smiley saturday i think this is what we need right positivity you know and uh, happiness i think that's very important and the need of the hour god bless you all thank you ma'am thank you so much thank, uh, thank you session uh, lakshmi ma'am can i proceed for vote of thanks yeah and just before that formal vote of thanks i'd like to first say thank you myself to the entire ismi team thank you so much dr meena it was really so interactive and interesting thanks a million i think we could have regular sessions with you as always um and uh, just uh, in a concluding uh, tone i'd like to say that you know our last program that we going to have especially for uh, the bcom uh, bms and uh, bac students we going to have last concluding program for this academic year and this is going to be chaired by none other than our alumnus and he is going to talk on uh, becoming your own master entrepreneurship basics uh he has been into nokri.com shadi.com he's been in an ad agency and uh, now he started a lot of his own businesses a lot of startups so he is going to come and talk to us about what are the basics that every entrepreneur should know when he starts business so i've been requesting i've been talking to him and i'll be sending that brochure out to you so anybody in the lockdown wants to start something new you can take it once for that All right thanks uh, milin uh, i'm going to hand this over back to you yes sir thank you lakshmi ma'am 
Thank on uh, behalf of the HSNC board, uh, RD National College and uh, placement sale, uh, I would like to our uh, uh, respected principal, Dr. Neha Jaktini, ma'am, without whose support uh, this session would not have been possible. Uh, I also uh, would like to thank, thank you so much uh, uh, to our uh, uh, respected uh, vice principal, Professor Lakshmi Ayer, madam, Dr. Kiran Jatar, ma'am, Professor uh, Dinesh Shamat Sangani, sir, who is also coordinator of IQSC. And uh, a very big thank you to Dr. Mina, ma'am, uh, Anchan Shrop, ma'am, uh, Soumya Ahuja, ma'am. And uh, personally, I, I like all flow of flow, all entire session for presentation with launching of a pool based on problem solving, self-management, technology and development, then um, explanation, what are the importance of advanced scale, how we can use different uh, features in um, Excel, like uh, Solver, Goal C, pivot, how we can use pulled a pivot table for different analysis, then how we can make an effective presentation based on different uh, session. And uh, uh, ma'am, for this, I am very th thank you for this, your excellent uh, thought provoking uh, session. And it was great uh, to have you with for this uh, session and looking forward to many more sessions uh, based on different research areas and long-term association with you, ma'am. Thank I you. also would like to thank our um, uh, dear students, sincere work colleague, hardworking students who were present for this uh, virtual online session. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you, much. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you, dear thank you. All thank the best you. and uh, reach out whenever. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, dear students. Hi, Sydney. Thank you. Dear students, please write your full name, roll number, and class in chat box if possible. Minimum excellent session. I Thank personally you. like launching of that with help of uh, Anchal. I, that of was all. just them. I mean, nice, really, nice, nice session. Yeah, yeah. That's why I told you, you know, like uh, they have that. Uh, you have to learn from them, right? I mean, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. The comments you, are also very encouraging. Oh, Thank no. you. Yes. We'll see not. yes, yes. Thank you. I think you can take the, this thing, this uh, chat. Uh, Yes, yes, I did. I did take some of them. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kaisad. Thank yeah, you, sir. Kaisad. Thank you, Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, You know, please really kept up with me. <laughs> In future, he will become doctor, ma'am. Yeah. I'm also doctor just going to... Yeah, oh, yeah. Nice. He will. He will. He will. Absolutely. All the best. And uh, ma'am, let you, me know if there's anything I can do even later. Yeah. So we can do some other session. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We we'll leave. Thank you. Thank, yeah. thank, you. Yes, yes. thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank, ma thank you. Bye, guys. That's thank all. you. Bye, ma'am. Um, bye, ma'am. Ma thank you so much. Lakshmi, ma'am, can I end this session? Hello, Lakshmi, ma'am. So I guess she left. Yes, yes, yes. Minister, I think we can end this session. Yes, yes, yes. I, uh, thank you so much, sir. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you.